Ahoy, people! Vandiverse from the Vandiverse Gaming Channel here with another video on Divinity Original Sin 2. Today's video, I want to cover the Scoundrel Tree and give you my top 10 favorite abilities, and then the other five abilities that I do use, I just don't use them as often. I do want to apologize for the lack of content lately. We've been getting up about one video a week versus three. It's just, we do this as a hobby, my brother and I both, and to keep up with this content is hard for us, especially during our busy season for our job. So hopefully at the beginning of the year, once the holidays are over, we'll try and get on a more regularly scheduled program. So without further ado, let's get started here. So the first four abilities you get with only one point in Scoundrel are Adrenaline, Backlash, Chloroform, and Throwing Knife. Now, if you watch my you, my top 15 favorite utility, early game utility spells, Adrenaline was there. It's a great ability to have just because it gives you two extra AP points in one turn. If you combine this with the Elf's um, Flesh Eater and you also have Haste, it can give one character maybe four different attacks they can do in one turn versus the normal two. And... The counter to that is that the next round you only can get one attack instead of two. So it's one of those things where you can kind of take out a lot of targets, do a lot of damage in one turn, and then be pretty much useless the next turn. But that's where invisibility comes in and stuff, so you can kind of hide yourself away until your ability points reset on the third turn. The next ability is Backlash. This is a great ability because it always backstabs. And then on top of that, it allows you to get behind a target, so it's like a teleport with a backstab on it. It does decent damage, it only costs one point, and it has a three turn cooldown. So it's just a, a nice ability to have as a rogue, because your whole goal is to get behind people and backstab them for the extra damage. The third ability is Chloroform. Chloroform de destroys 284 to 314 magic at this current level, and then it sets sleep for one turn. It's really nice. This was also in my utility video. Um, if you have some magic-based character, if you're well-rounded where some of your damage is magic, some of your damage is physical, this is a great ability to have because you can take away their magic damage. And some targets don't have a lot of magic damage. They're more physical. And this is a great ability to use that if your magic armor from Chloroform destroys all of their magic armor in one hit, you can put them to sleep for a turn. So it's a nice CC ability, even if you're not magic damage focused, it gives you the ability to, you know, put to sleep some of the targets that are more physical damage based than magic, uh, magical armor based. The next ability is Throwing Knife. Throwing Knife is your ranged ability. This is pretty much your only ranged attack that you have for the most part. Um, it does decent damage, and if you're behind someone, it can backstab. For only having a one-turn cooldown, it's just a nice ability that you can just be sure that you can get to use it every single turn almost. Um, it's just something that you have, you have where if you blow all your other abilities, it's just there. So I like it, especially early game. You know, sometimes finishing off someone from range, it's important when you're, your backlash is down or your teleport's down, and you don't want to waste the time to move or the points to move. So that's the level 1 abilities. Let's get into the level 2, so Scoundrel 2 abilities. The first one is Corrupted Blade. Now this is probably one of my favorite abilities in the Scoundrel Tree because it sets Decay and Diseased. It hits really hard and it sets Decay and Diseased. What Decay and Diseased does is Decay basically makes it where healing actually hurts you instead of helps you. And then the disease pretty much really lowers your constitution and makes you pretty much weaker than you were before. So one ability that can decay and disease somebody and it lasts for two turns, yeah, it costs three AP points. It's just a really, really good ability to have. The next ability is Sawtooth Knife. Sawtooth Knife is similar to the uh, Marksman Fang where it doesn't effect it's not affected by physical armor so basically if you're looking to take out a character that has a lot of physical armor still you can still attack them with this and it has no effect by their physical armor it can't be blocked so you can do 208 to 219 damage straight to them now again these these numbers of damage is at the level i'm at currently so it's just a nice ability to have and it sets bleed for three turns which is kind of nice but I'm more concerned about the fact that it can go through armor and you don't have to worry about physical armor to do damage. 
The next ability is Cloak and Dagger. This is similar to the Phoenix Dive and the Warfare ability and Tactical Retreat in the Huntsman tree, where basically you can teleport to a certain location. You can do this while invisible or sneaking for positioning and not break invisibility. It's just a nice ability to have to position your rogue, get behind people, get out of the fight, that kind of sort. Ruptured Tendon, this is probably one of my favorite abilities for melee type characters. Um, the reason being is if you hit them with this, it deals 168 to 178 physical damage. But when they move, they will take damage from movement. So this is really great to have if you use it on certain characters. Um, if you combine this with a fear where they have to move because they're going to try and run away. They just constantly take damage. So using this ability and then combining a fear or something of the sort or a teleport, teleport them really far away and then they have to come to you, come back to get to you because they're a melee character and they have no range. Just a sick, sick ability to have. It's probably my favorite ability in the scoundrel tree. And then the next ability is sleeping arm. This does the same damage that Ruptured Tundon does. Um, the only difference is this actually sets Atrophy for two turns, which means that they can't use weapons or weapon skills anymore. Uh, there is a, an ability in the Polymorph Tree that does the same thing, but I think it only lasts for one turn where this lasts for two. It's just a superior ability, especially when you're fighting a lot of melee characters that have they hit really hard with two-handers. Uh, it's just really nice to be able to take out their weapon and prevent them from doing any damage for two turns. So those are the level two or two point scoundrel abilities that I really like. Um, over here, I have a two point scoundrel ability called Gag Order. It does it destroys magic armor on target and it silences the target. You know, it costs three to use. You can destroy magic armor with chloroform, and it only costs one. Um, it's not a ranged ability. It only lasts for one turn for silence. I just, for the cost of it and what it does, it's just not something I really waste my three ability points on. And then the rest of these are going to be three point abilities, which we'll go into. So the three point ability, Scoundrel level three that I use is Wind Up Toy. This thing is super fun. You basically just cast this little guy out here, and then you can control him like any pet, and then you can get to your destination and then explode. And he does magic damage. So he does fire, he does magic damage, and he does a decent amount of magic damage and puts this giant fireball area on the ground. So just a really fun ability to use. It does really good damage. Since you're mainly going to be physical damage based, if you want to do magic damage with it, it just it's super fun. And it only costs two points to use. I use this all the time. It does not break invisibility or sneak. And... The state of the summon will depend on the caster's level and summoning ability. Um, so basically, if you kind of if you have summoning and scoundrel together, this works a little bit better because of the damage. But just the fact that you can be invisible on a turn and throw this little guy out, it's just really fun. So one of my favorite abilities, just because it's entertaining. Now, those are the ten abilities that I use a lot. I really enjoy. Now here are the five in the scoundrel tree I don't really use as much, and I'll tell you why. So the first one is going to be Terrifying Cruelty. This takes three ability points to cast. The damage is decent. It sets Bleed for one turn and Terrified for another turn. It's re resisted by physical and by magic armor because Bleeding is physical resist, Terrified is magic resist. So just the fact that you have two separate resists for it, it costs three AP. Terrified only lasts one point or one turn. It's just n similar to gag order. It's not worth the three ability points to use in my opinion. Now everyone has their own opinion. This is solely my opinion. Now these last three abilities all cost source points. The first is fan of knives. The second is dagger drawn and the third is mortal blow. Now fan of knives basically you fling a dagger at every enemy around you dealing 168 to 178 physical damage and it can backstab. So this is like throwing knives, but you throw a bunch of them, and it's almost similar to like the the Huntsman Barrage ability, where you can kind of separate which one hits who. It just for a source point, it's really just not worth it in my opinion. I guess there's there's opportunities to use this because of the backstab, 
but to cost three AP and a source point, I just, I really think it's a waste of an ability. And the same with Daggers Drawn. Daggers Drawn costs four AP and two source points, and you do five stabs, each dealing 93 to 98 physical damage, but each one can crit. So let's just say 500 damage is what this thing does. That's a really good hard hitting ability. Uh, I just, there's so many other things that you have on your bar with CC damage that constantly reset. I just don't always use this. It just never comes to me, oh, use daggers drawn. It just never pops up when I'm playing to, I should use this. Yes, it's a hard hitter. Yes, it works against certain characters. It can pretty much completely eliminate a guy off the board. So it has its uses. It's just not something I use all the time. And then lastly, Mortal Blow. So Mortal Blow is your only five scoundrel ability. It costs all three of your source points and two AP. It deals 239 to 249 damage, but if you are sneaking or invisible, it's doubled. So similar to your other ability, it does about 500 damage. Um, and the key is, is it instantly kills a target below 20% vitality. So... That, I guess, makes sense if they have a ton of health. You break down their armor, and 20% vitality is still 1,000 hit points or, you know, 700 hit points. That makes this worthwhile. Otherwise, to me, for the cost, all my source points and 2 AP, I just, I don't know. I guess if you mix this with the polymorph tree where you have that, I think it's apothesis i don't even know if that's how you say it where all of your abilities are free source points like they don't they all give you three source points and you can use this more than once it makes sense again it has its its spots it's just not something that i use throughout the game it's one of those niche abilities that at the right time in the right scenario it's totally worth it so this is my view on the scoundrel tree hope you guys enjoy it please leave any comments below uh, I answer all comments from the community as long as it's constructive. Please give this a like if you like it, if it's helpful. That's all that matters to me is that I'm making content that's helpful and people enjoy it. And then lastly, sub to the channel, bottom right-hand corner to see all my videos on Divinity Original Sin 2. I appreciate you guys watching. This is Vaniverse from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Cheers and peace out.